And welcome to another show. I guess it's a show. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm RJ Orgren. Welcome to my uh, Thursday videos. And uh, as you can see, uh, trying to get organized here. There we go. That's better. Ha! Ah, yes, two ballerinas. And uh, well, hi, uh, everybody. Okay, let's all join in. Everybody, get on here. <clears throat> and see, I took my glasses off, and I can sort of see that it's Bessie Pearl. Hi, everybody. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm laughing at myself, and I haven't done anything yet. There's nothing funny going on. So, um, and David, hi, David. Uh, it's good to see you. Um, okay, yes, I'm working on uh, two ballerinas at the same time. These are for two different people. So um, I will have these done actually uh, by the first of the week and uh, move on to uh, another painting. I'm trying to think of which one that is, <clears throat> but it doesn't matter. There's a bunch of them. So... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, as as uh, why don't I stop and start over? <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, everybody, uh, I'm gonna uh, tell you about something uh, pretty neat. Of course, uh, the uh, Aurora Art Commission. This is in Aurora, Illinois, where I'm from. Actually, born here. I posted a picture of the hospital, which is St. Joseph's Hospital, which uh, eventually became a home for nuns and is now a retirement uh, home. And um, so that's pretty cool. But anyway, so I'm from here. And of course, the uh, paper, the Beacon uh, newspaper, just uh, did a story on me, which was a uh, front page, which is pretty neat. And uh, they, um, uh, Jennifer wrote a, an excellent article uh, about me. It was very, very nice. And because of that article, I am, I am oh, I see more of you are jumping in here, um, going to be doing other things. But the part of the reason for that is because this is Mickey's 90th and they thought it would be really neat to have something about Disney in Aurora and actually I uh, talked to the Aurora Art Commission and Jen Evans uh, last week and we are in the uh, development stages uh, for a very very large mural uh, if it's a good the wall we're looking at on this building is 100 feet long and 25 feet high approximately <clears throat> and uh, so I I get to go up on scaffolding again. Oh boy! Uh, so, <laughs> so what fun that'll be! Uh, and um, it's going to have uh, some history to it, but it's also going to be very whimsical, uh, very much. Um, it, it's going to have a Disney look to it, but it won't be Disney. Uh, that's all I'm going to say about it. Uh, we want this to be a, a big surprise once it gets going. This won't be painted. Uh, if, if everything goes well, we'll start painting it next April, May, something like that. So there's a lot of work to do. I've still, I'm still working on sketches. And um, hi, everybody. Hi, Romina. Um, um, still no notification, but I am here. Okay. Did others of you get notification when I go live? I can't figure out how to fix that. I, is it something on my end am I supposed to do? I've looked at all kinds of stuff on Facebook, and I'm going like, Eesh. you should get a notification when I go live. And um, I'm kind of at a loss as to why that's not happening. So um, as you can tell by my by lighting, I got a light over my shoulder here. Yeah, that's from my desk. Um, it snowed this morning. We got um, almost an inch, and two hours after it snowed, it almost all melted. <laughs> so, um, so I, again, I say, you know, uh, if anybody has any suggestions or knows why I'm not, you're not getting notifications when I'm on. Um, 
or if anybody knows how to fix that, let me know. Because <laughs> I've looked at all kinds of stuff uh, on Facebook. So I'm going to have some coffee from one of my, I have so many favorite mugs. Mm. And by the way, our two mug shelves, which hold a hundred and what do we count? 150 or 60 mugs. Uh, almost 100 of them are Disney mugs. And this one is um, Walt and Mickey on Main Street. Man, I love this one. So that's fun. And you also can, actually, you can see the the Indian right there figure that uh, I uh, painted a couple times, redid him totally. He was bigger than that. So, <laughs> hmm. Oh my, that's good. Um, so anyway, oh Allison, you were no notified. Oh Ramina, it's your computer. <laughs> it's your Facebook. <laughs> um, I, I guess we have to click on something of our own that says notify me when other people do something. Check in your um, your set Facebook settings. It, it because uh, that's what I was looking at. Uh, so, Allison, it's good to hear that you were notified. Uh, so we, we, some of you know I'm here. I know I'm here. Um, I am going to paint on her face now. I want you can see the difference here. This face is is done on these ballerinas. I'm actually going to move this closer so you can get a better look. There we go. And try to hold this steady. Um, so what I did, what I did, of course, is paint a base coat first, um, and then went back in and, and finished her face and um, her her arms and her her legs, which you can't see. This one has the base coat on it. I just did mostly. Well, there's three colors. Uh, there's the the uh, uh, flesh tone color and then a darker shade. Uh, that I mixed in with uh, raw sienna and a little burnt umber, and then I have burnt umber down in here that I blended in. So I'm going to paint on her face a little bit today, and uh, but I got to show you. I do my things. I got a couple of fun things to tell you about. Um, first, I got to do my just like Stephen Colbert with his book. <laughs> Buy, buy our books. This is our first book, Together in the Dream. And 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 yes, that <laughs> this picture of me painting the crocodile in Jungle Cruise, right not long after we uh, uh, Tom snapped this photo of me, one of the other artists, uh, it started snowing in the middle of the day. Yeah, very rare in Orlando for it to snow in daytime. And Suzanne actually is wearing what they wore under the character costumes. And then we followed that up with remembering the magic. It's it can be read separately. Uh, well, of course you're gonna read it separately. It wouldn't be both books at the same time. But it is uh, basically a sequel. And that photo on there is a picture I took in uh, uh, 2015. That was when we were there for our 50th anniversary. And, um, and I should mention, too, uh, the first book, we're back to this. The uh, foreword is written by um, uh, our good friend Alice Davis, Mark Davis's wife. And Alice did a lot of the costuming, of course, on figures and the attractions. And the foreword on Remembering the Magic is by the uh, great magician and uh, comedian and uh, was the one who co-wrote the show at Diamond Horseshoe Review years ago, but Bev Bergeron. And, and actually, I illustrated a magic book with him, which he wrote. <laughs> Obviously, I just illustrated uh, my book, The Design of Fear, which is uh, a lot of funny stories. It talks about uh, doing 3D painting in black light and haunted houses including the haunted mansion there's a big chapter in here and all the crazy things i ran into over the years all the real and imagined ghosts like on the queen mary which we did stuff out in long beach and um and the other books i showed you too have there's a lot of humor there's a lot of touching stories there's a lot of of great uh uh 
things about what it was like in the 70s and 80s to work at Walt Disney World. And this is, I'm very fond of this. This is actually the cover is from a painting that I did uh, that's in Suzanne's uh, study. And this is her novel. And everybody, this is not a romance novel. This is a character-based story about a young woman in her 30s as an actress. And she ends up going to help her mother run a bed and breakfast. And what happens, and there's some intrigue, there's some tragedy, there's there's all kinds of stuff going on here. But it is not a romance novel, okay? Just because it's written by a woman. This is excellent. You should read it. Like now, <laughs> I'm going to get the books out of the way and show you. <laughs> I go to UPS yesterday um, to uh, get a the painting of Jessica and Roger Rabbit in the Haunted Mansion, the one I showed, uh, to get it boxed up because uh, that was for uh jameson chung uh, who's becoming a really good friend he lives out in la and he works on amtrak and so every week or a couple weeks or whatever he is on the train it's like a two and a half day trip i think it is he said um and with all the stops and they come into chicago and they stay overnight and then not on the train at a hotel and then they get back on the next day and go back the other way um which I think is really cool. And uh, I've done a couple other paintings. Well, we found it was great. Rather than having to ship the painting, we the first painting I did for him, we took it downtown Chicago to the hotel. Uh, that was a real trip, trying because it was a big stretch painting. <laughs> it was funny. Should have seen us trying to get that in our uh, Mustang in a big box. <laughs> and then the last one I did, he actually came to our home in Aurora, which was great. There's pictures of us. And the one I just did, which I had boxed up, Susanna, we figured out that the train stops in Naperville, which Aurora, Aurora and then the next town east of us is Naperville. And a good-sized train station. But the Amtrak is only going to stop just to let passengers off. And there were only seven people getting off. The rest were going into Chicago. So Jameson said, we have like a minute to two minutes. He says, I will be the third car from the rear of the train. I will jump off. <laughs> and Suzanne and I were going to be there with us to hand it off to him. He's going to jump back on the train. Well, he was in he was in touch with the conductor as they were coming toward the station, trying to figure out if they were on the correct track because we were on the station side, which is normally where they are. But very, very few times do they get switched to the other track on the other side, which would have meant in that minute to two minutes tops, I would have had to try to run uh, through the station, down through a tunnel, under the train track, and back up the other side and try to get it to him in time, which I don't think was going to happen. Um, fortunately, the train came in on the correct side. I had this, I said to Suzanne, if he, Goes on the other side, I'll just tell him to roll the window down and I'll throw it across the tracks. So <laughs> I was considering throwing Jameson's painting at the Amtrak train. I'd probably gotten arrested <laughs> for it. But anyway, uh, fortunately, he got off and that's, it was cold. It was windy and very cold standing on that platform. And the first train we saw coming, we thought it was him uh in his train and as it got up right to us we went freight train and you know we're only about five feet away from the edge of the track oh, that was really cold but anyway it worked out fine he's got the painting and actually he's headed back to la today so that was the <laughs> that was the painting adventure which <laughs> was quite amusing um okay um let me check here and see what else is going on. Uh, see if anybody asked a question. No questions, no comments. Good grief. This thing, it's like it's frozen up on me here. I can't scroll down. Just, oh, there it goes. Um, oh, Gail. Oh, Corrine, hi. Um, <laughs> okay.
It's Thursday. What can I say? Um, so I told you about that. Oh, and so anyway, uh, back up to the UPS, which I first was starting to mention, I went over to UPS, of course, to get that packaged up. That was yesterday, uh, that painting. And I told our, who have become great friends uh, at uh, uh, Linda and Emily, the manager and assistant manager at the UPS, and they handle all the paintings that I do, and they ship them out, and they box them and everything else, and they're great. I told them about the article in the Aurora Beacon newspaper, which is a subsidiary now of the Chicago Trib. And <laughs> I saw this big poster laying there, and I says, how, how much is it to have one of those done? Um, and and <laughs> Linda says, you have the newspaper article with you? I went, well, I've got in the car. I'm fixing my hair. I take a look at myself here. Uh, and <laughs> she says, bring it in. I went, well, how much is it? She says, just bring it in. I went, okay. So I went out to the car and got it and left it with her. And then they contacted me uh, late yesterday and said, we've got this for you. I went in to see it. And it was their gift to me. And boy, this is great. I'm going to have to get a frame and that's going to go here in the uh, studio and isn't this fun got a protective thing i think i don't know if you'll be able to see it it's so big there's the bottom it's got mickey mouse and it's got the date and it's got the article <laughs> oh look at that and then it's got the beacon news at the top <laughs> and those were actual pictures that uh that uh, she took in my studio here and uh that was really nice and uh linda said she might make another one just to have it for a display piece in the ups office i might not go for it <laughs> so that was funny i love it and tomorrow suzanne and i i know we're going to hear about it when we go tomorrow because we will going be going to the calla lily uh tea room here in aurora which we do every friday which we haven't the last two fridays because suzanne sadly was not feeling well she's much better now um her allergies went nuts on her with the uh, seasonal stuff here um and any who um <laughs> that's so cool thank you um so <laughs> now uh, uh let's see oh and because of the article being in the paper i've gotten a couple one i got a call from the tampa newspaper and i thought oh tampa and the guy says we would like to offer you a framed uh plaque of the newspaper article i went oh let me stop you right there uh thank you but i appreciate it but no i don't want that it's going to be like 85 dollars or something no but um i did get a message from um uh, a lovely woman uh rachel rose b hi rachel if you're out there i don't know if you're watching um trying to look at stuff at the same time i'm doing everything here uh who has uh she and um i so i think it's your husband right you have a, a show that is called housewife of horror <laughs> it's about the haunted house industry and all the haunted mansion stuff and everything else and they wanted to have me on uh they're shooting episodes their trailer will be on amazon on the uh next week and the episodes will start the first week of december on amazon cool also a shout out to tmr productions ryan and stacy layman love you guys uh go to tmr production studios you'll see some great videos that they do they did one of me uh and suzanne uh what, six, eight months ago, something like that. Um, and um, so, yeah, check them out. And he's a phenomenal magician. Uh, we're trying to work it out so they, when they come to town one time, they'll be on the show. Uh, and I have a few things to say about, um, I've said everything else I can say. Well, I'll tell you some stuff about the Haunted Mansion as I'm. Ow. was nothing it was a triangle plastic yep. all right it was this i have drafting tools i have, i don't know if you all know but for years i, I actually studied architecture in college and worked for uh, architectural offices and 
He's putting his glasses on. He's going to do something. Uh, hi, Ashley. Hi, Tina. Uh, how's England? Um, there's Rachel. Yeah. Hey, Rachel. I just, I hope you're on when I just mentioned your show, uh, which they want me to be on one of the episodes, which should be a lot of fun. After you have me on, you may never want me back. <laughs> so I need more coffee. Now, in the middle of designing uh, and laying out this idea for this huge mural in downtown Aurora, I'm also doing sketch sketches and drawings right now for the set for the play of Wit, very serious about cancer patient stuff. It's, uh, it's not a comedy, folks. Um, I actually did that same show uh, 15 years ago. Or, yeah. Um, and... Um, won an award for it was was really neat now i'm going to attempt to bait paint paint i'm going to paint the lighting's pretty good in here today of course it's great for you but it's not real bright for me it looks like it but it's not um now i've got my my magic cups these are glad cups that i get because the paint acrylic paint really holds up well in these and after i've been using it a couple of days i might uh, add a little water to it and mix it up and uh, make it a little bit better so um what i'm going to do here is put some now this is the this is the color i already have on here the base color and i'm going to do that i'm going to take a little bit of titanium white and do a little highlight on the upper part of her face here and and on her eyelid which we want that to be brighter so if you can see that um i will also then let me get these colors. Now, I have to go just below the eyebrow and put a little bit of the base i i the base color of her skin. Jeez, RJ, um, and then take some of this, which is almost like a tan color and blend that into that. Now, when this dries, which it dries rather quickly, I can come back in and do a little highlight on it. And I've also got mixed a little bit of what looks like a, a reddish pink, so I can put a little bit of that into the skin areas. And now I'm going to get the smaller brush, smaller brush, um, and do a little bit of this, uh, a line where her top of her eyelid is. Okay. And I'll put in her eyebrow. A little bit of that for the moment. Woohoo! Um, <laughs> I'm gonna make her eyebrow a little darker. And okay. Now, what? My favorite. One of my favorite. Well, everything's my favorite in Haunted Mansion. As most of you know, uh, I actually, the, we, these original um, stretch room paintings came under our uh, guidance, our, our management, um, and we were involved in uh, the replacement of them one time. Another time we did some quick repairs uh, until we could get a new one in, because think about it, those things go up and down so many times a day 
that eventually they're, they're going to catch and they're going to rip or something's going to happen to them. But it's done so well that they hold up really well. And the originals for years were actual paintings. Uh, now they're done on digital uh, printing and stuff, and it's really nice. Um, but, okay, I'm going to lighten this up a little bit up here. Oops, if I get a lighter color. Ah, and there we go. So, all right. Now, um, I'm going to show you her. I'm going to do the eye ball, which is not a pure white. It's got a little, I'm going to take a little bit of this tan color and add some white to it. There we go. Just a tiny bit. I'm actually mixing it right in the cup there. Because um, I don't want this to be a real bright white in, on her eyeball, even though it looks like it. I'll do this one too. Okay. And then I want to do her eyeballs. Oh, not that color. Nope. Let's try this one. We're going to do a little bit of, we're going to make her, her pupils a bluish green color. And the blue I'm using is the blue on the background. You're all with me? Are you painting at the same time? Um, we had to be careful when we when we went up in the top of the stretch room. I know the first time I was up there and you had to lean out at an angle over the space. It's, it was it looks a lot further down than it is when you're up on top. It's like being on a high dive. So oh dear, don't let me fall. Um but that was really cool to be up in that position and, and see that. Now I'm switching to some, some black here. And I'm going to add a little bit of water to my black. And I'm going to do she has real thick eyelashes. And it come part way over there. Plus, not only are they thick, they're long. A little bit right there. Now, the if you're doing a, a portrait, this is this is interesting. Um, it works better. If you, when you're doing the eye on the figure, if you actually, uh, in the white areas, do a little bit of shadow under that eyelash, uh, it makes it look more real, even though that isn't a natural um, a thing. A little trick I learned doing portraits. I'm going to put a little bit of a, line under her eye here and then I'm going to take some pure white and put in the highlight which is what makes the figure look more real. Um, I'm going to move this closer so you can see what I was doing. Oops, this way. Here's the other one. There they are side by side. There we go. So you can see as it develops. So, and, and actually, if you'll notice, the leaves are not exactly the same, they're close. 
but I didn't have a couple of these further down right here. I should put a couple there. Yeah. <clears throat> They're very similar to the original, but this is what I talked about before. The fact that every time I do a, a, one of these stretch room paintings, there are little things that are a little bit different. Um, I try to get it as close to the original, which is pretty darn close, but there are still little things here and there that will, will vary. And uh, I'll show you one other thing. Uh, around the umbrella, you know, I've, I've done all that. Then this is just white, this fringe on the umbrella. And the brush is kind of stiff. Excellent. There we go. Uh, and it's uneven. So I can go all the way around. The edge of the umbrella. I don't have to worry about it being a straight line. It's one of the easier things to paint on this. So it comes down over here. And I'm going to go back this way, otherwise I'll be sticking my hand in wet paint. And after this dries, if there's any touch up, like in the blue background around the edge, I'll, I'll of course fix that. And go right up there. We go. Ta -da. That's done. <laughs> oh, thing says new comment. Who has a new comment? Um, oh, there we go. Uh, we are making happy trees. <laughs> I was doing happy umbrellas. <clears throat> a lot of you know that I, Suzanne and I were good friends with Bob Ross, and I did some videos. Uh, cartoon videos um but anyway <laughs> so, yeah i'm doing happy trees happy umbrellas happy eyeball so <laughs> paint along with me um i've got to go for now oh bye corinne come back and watch later um uh, Okay. Hi. Um, so I was going to, don't go away. Um, anyway, um, I was going to tell you some stuff about the Haunted Mansion. Uh, and please uh, jump right in. Um, <clears throat> as you all know, um, uh, at Disney World or any, all theme parks actually, but at uh, places like Disney World, um, there have been accidents on the attractions, unfortunately, some caused by many times by natural uh, heart failure, even in young people. Um, and uh, of course, there's been other tragic accidents uh, that some that happened while we were working there. And um, I was looking that up on the on the laptop today, and actually, they didn't have they didn't have hardly anything from the 70s it it used to be they would say that nobody dies uh at disney world they died unfortunately on the way to the hospital <clears throat> but sometimes that's that's really not true um but uh the 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 thing is that when it does happen it's it's very unfortunate and a lot of times it's the it's what the guests do that is so goofy. Uh, back in the, oh, what was it around? It was in the 90s, I believe. But I remember this specifically, it was that a, a, a young uh, child drowned in the uh, moat by the castle. And it was uh, during uh, 
uh, if I recall, it was during the parade or during the fireworks, one or the other. But the parents had set the child over the wrought iron fence and let the kid play on the grass. And then they turned around, watched what was going on. And the kid went down to the water and drowned. Uh, I don't want to say, what, what are you thinking? Um, but, um, and of course, you all know that you used to be able to ride in the front of the monorails. That was our favorite thing when, when I was on monorails only for three months before I became an artist and Suzanne did it for a year and a half, was having guests in the front cab because you got to meet so many wonderful people. Um, and uh, uh, back then, the, 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 the one, the monorail that goes from the ticket and transportation center to the Magic Kingdom uh, Express from the parking lot to the kingdom uh, was always a recorded message. Uh, you just push buttons to hit what was going on. But when we did the hotel run, we actually then, they don't, now it's recorded. Back then, we got to do a spiel. And we did it in English and in Spanish. <clears throat> well, I don't know much Spanish. I know some. And uh, I wanted to, being an actor, I wanted to do it right if I was going to say stuff in, in Spanish. And I uh, practiced and practiced and got pretty good at it. So much so that I would get guests in the front cab and I do the spiel and they're, they turn on their eyes and go wide like, oh, he speaks Spanish. And they'd start talking to me and I'm like, ah, uh, this is no hable uh, espanol. No. I'm going like, well, sorry, <laughs> I really should learn some. And I actually determined I would learn more uh, working on monorails. And then next thing I knew, I was promoted to artist and everything changed um oh six new comments you have oh there's a, a long comment hold on a minute let's back up a little um sean yeah, I'm just uh, uh i'm excited i'm excited that you're here sean um let's see i want to make sure it's our favorite ride too Im impossible to pick just one favorite thing yeah the haunted mansion yeah you know the haunted mansion um i'm going to talk about that in a second here uh let me see and your happy faces. Um, the front of the monorail was the best ride ever. Yes, that was phenomenal. Um, it just was so much fun. Um, and of course, that tragically, uh, the accident that happened was one monorail backing up uh, onto the um, uh, the track at the Magic Kingdom and backed right into. Uh, the other monorail and smashed the cab and there were no guests in there but they decided after that i think it was 98 or 2000 right around they decided not to allow anybody to ride up front anymore which i thought was tragic another tragic thing on monorails uh nothing against uh elderly people but almost all the monorail people now are they look like they're all 65 or older <laughs> And back when we did it, you had to be at least 20 to be on monorails, and most everybody was in their 20s. I happened to be 32 at the time when I did that. So I was, I think I was the oldest one out there at that point. Um, I think they were much, we were much friendlier uh, and happier and uh, had a great time. Enough said about that. Uh, somebody my height and weight, said Space Mountain had caused an injury. So it made me go on the ride like 20 times and stop it at a certain point to see if I would hit my knees. It never did. That was during my time working at Space Mountain. <laughs> oh, wow. To use you as a test dummy? <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Rosemary, enjoy all your stories and paintings. Yeah, me too. Uh, <laughs> I'm just laughing at myself. Um, sadly, and it's not in the stuff I saw, but um, there was when they were testing, uh, well, actually Space Mountain had opened, and an employee, uh, the story I heard when I was there was that an employee had some friends, they all went on the ride, and he not only held his hands up, he stood up, and it, he was killed. And that is very tragic. Uh, please don't stand up on a roller coaster, people. Um, 
I'm not the one who throws my arms up. Of course, I can't ride them anymore. I'm not great on roller coasters anyway. Um, well, Allison, thank you. I think you are so cool. That's what I say about myself, and nobody believes me. <laughs> Gail, OSHA. Yes, OSHA made the monorail transportation form instead of a ride attraction, which ended the front ride of all. That, oh, good point. Very good point. Um, and it, it actually, they shouldn't have done that. It's a ride attraction. And uh, even though there were a couple other incidents over the years, we were there. Um, we weren't, uh, weren't, I mean, Suzanne was actually at the park uh, working when the monorail caught fire uh, some years ago. And people had to, uh, they smashed out the windows. They crawled up on top. Uh, Reedy Creek Fire Department got there and got everybody off safely and everything. But, um, you know, only minor, minor injuries. But this, the, their safety record on the attractions actually is incredible. Um, like I said, people do dumb things quite often. Uh, sometimes it's just a, a misstep and it's not their fault. Uh, but the, the young lady who got uh, injured very badly uh, getting on the attraction at the Haunted Mansion uh, in the load area was switching cars. And she jumped between the cars and fell down and got caught in the track and injured quite badly. Uh, she survived, but um, you, you hear these things all the time. I, I know some others I'm not even going to tell you because they were uh, things I was told by uh, Mark Davis and Wasel Rogers and Leota uh, that go back to Disneyland and stuff. And again, just uh, sad. Um, David, so we could both get a job driving the monorail. <laughs> yes. We could now get a job driving the monorail because we're older. <laughs> if you're 20, good luck trying to get on monorails. <laughs> Just put on makeup until you age yourself down and you can do it. Uh, good one, David. Uh, so, but uh, I'm going to go back to the Haunted Mansion here, too. You know, we had to be careful when we would go in there. Um, cause we would get it to the four of us would get to the, uh, to the magic kingdom early. Uh, we drove in from the back of the property. Sometimes we could park our cars right by our studio. Other times when it was, uh, so busy and I mean, there was only so many spaces back behind there you could park in. It was a limited parking lot. Um, Sometimes we would hide hide one of our cars in the spray booth, <laughs> so they didn't know we were there. So, so whoever got there first, of course, then you want to use the spray booth. They had to move the car out, and then security would come and say, "Whose car is that? You have the wrong sticker." Um, but yeah, all the stickers on the cars have colors, and based on what level of management you are, you had that color sticker and. They'd say, oh, only stickers this color and above can park behind here today. We try all the time, and sometimes we get to. Um, so most often we had to park at the back of the property and also and take the bus, <clears throat> which then pulled in behind the big um, open uh, tunnel area. The biggest opening to the tunnel is the main tunnel. Uh, and if you were facing the tunnels on your left would be the rise, uh, the road going up to uh, the 20,000 leagues under the sea. And to the right would be, it's a small world. Uh, we were right across the small parking lot from uh, it's a small world. And then off to our right would, was the back of the haunted mansion. And um, anyway, we would get there an hour, usually two hours prior to park opening. So I wasn't too fond when the park would open at eight o'clock. We had to be there at six. I'm not a morning person. <laughs> no, I'd rather stay up. I'm an actor. I'm used to doing shows, you know, that end at 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night and then going out and, and, and uh, having a, a good time with the other actors and crew members after the show. <sighs> 
So when I was doing shows, David, you know this, when we were doing shows, how tired I'd be some days and some nights because I do that and I'd get home like, a, we'd get home like a one or two and I had to get up at, uh, God, I had to, I had to be in at six. I had to be up by four o'clock and out the door by 4.30 to get to the Magic Kingdom in time and not be late. They'd always say, why are you so tired? I went, I don't know. <laughs> I was on stage last night. Come on, guys. Um, and, uh, and David and I did, well, we did many shows together. Great times. But uh, anyway, um, going into the Haunted Mansion, um, all, the, all the work lights were out. I mean, we're looking at the regular lighting that you that the guests see because that's what we need to see. Um, and it, it, if we have to touch something up or whatever, we can do it. If we have to do an emergency repair on a skin, most often repairs on figures with skins on them. And some of the ghosts have skins so that are translucent. It's really weird skins, but they actually you can see through them. Uh, uh, the the uh, four musicians that are playing when you go past the caretaker and the dog and the musicians on the left, those are translucent skins. But we still had to not only put them on like the other skins and melt them. Uh, you know, they had a opening up the, down the back. We had to trim out the eyes. We had to put extra uh, skin and melt it inside the corners and the top of the mouth and bottom. And that had to be melted into the mechanism. And it was a process, and you had to be really good at it. Now, we didn't do that in the attraction if it was just before opening. We would do that uh, if we were going to totally redo a figure uh, in a rehab like we did in uh, in the uh, late 70s. Uh, it was like 79, 80. We, we redid the Haunted Mansion. And, uh, but when we go in there to check things, especially figures that move their fingers a lot, let's say, or if they sang and were moving their mouth a lot or turning their neck, what would happen was after so many, many I mean, the figure could be great for months and months and months. And then you look and you see a little split off the corner of the mouth. Well, we could take our, our, our heating tools, which actually were, they were pretty good size, but they were like the woodworking, wood carving. <laughs> had a little cradle to set it in because it was very hot. But we had special tips made that were different shapes. And we could put a small tip, it'd be flat. And we could put it in between there and then squeeze that together to seal that, that up. And then we had to trim it. My gosh, it was so easy to do it wrong. And then all of a sudden it would bubble. And then trying to fix it after that skin bubble was almost impossible to get it to look right. So it took a lot of practice. It took me months to get really good at putting those on. And then, of course, we had our acetone-based paints, which we then could touch up a figure. And even the translucent figures, we would put in the, the uh, shading into the lines of the face and around the eyes and everything else to make it look real. If we didn't paint the figures' faces, uh, in any attraction, like Carousel of Progress, the presidents, if we didn't paint them, actually, like a, it's like painting a portrait only in 3D. Um, and that's why they call us animation artists. These were animated figures that were three-dimensional figures, though. They were audio animatronic. But they were moving, they were animated, and it was easier for people to call us animation artists than audio animatronic artists. <laughs> so... But anyway, you had to paint that in, and it made it the figure look real. If we didn't, that under the stage lighting especially, it would just flatten that face out and look really, really hot. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, hi, Jamie. Um, let's see. I got somebody. Oh, wait a minute. I'm trying to look here. Somebody else, one of you. Uh, David. Oh, Magic Kingdom is most beautiful at Christmas after the park closes, having done several commercials after hours. Yes, yes. Um, in fact, I know you've done that, David, over the years. And uh, myself and the other three artists, we did a commercial uh, for the Haunted Mansion, which didn't run in Florida. They ran everywhere else in the United States for Halloween. Never could find a copy of that. 
Um, but they did also a, an article in the Eyes and Ears about us, and some of you have seen that. Uh, but uh, yeah, fun. And they did a, uh, they were always doing specials, and especially filming uh, late at night. And sometimes they would come to us to do uh, prop pieces. Um, and uh, one I did in particular that I remember they were doing uh, with the with the uh, cast members dressed in the the character costumes. They had Geppetto and Pinocchio, and I don't remember. They had a couple of uh, young TV stars uh, singers that were doing the show. I don't remember exactly what it was, but they they had a uh, a real cat, <laughs> be Figaro, but they had and they had a big fishbowl about this big um and they but they couldn't find a goldfish that was big enough or looked right um and so they came to us and i ended up painting um uh, on acetone uh, acetone acetate a thick acetate clear um the fish and then we put a monofilament line on it and they could put it down in the water and then move it so it looked like the fish was swimming a little bit when they were done with the commercial they gave it to me i i got it here somewhere um i don't know where it's it's in it's in my studio on a wall somewhere <laughs> so um another crazy things but in the haunted mansion too or is any attraction you had to be careful of the figures that were moving because they, you get knocked over. Uh, I think a good example is in the ballroom. Um, when I would go up above, because the, the figures you see in the ballroom are a reflection on glass. Um, it's a, based on Pepper's ghost magic trick. And <clears throat> anyway, the, the real figures are below you and above you when you ride through looking at the ballroom. That's why you're right to the middle. <laughs> And uh, you go downstairs, and of course the, the dancers are on a, just going around like almost like a merry-go-round almost, and they're spinning. You don't want to get hit by one of those. Same with the ghosts that are flying in and out of the windows and uh, up above. And so you had to go up these other stairs, and I would go up and I'd check the figures. And uh, <clears throat> if those figures weren't turned on yet, I could check them. Usually they were in pretty good shape because... The only thing up there that lights up is them. But you had to be careful. Somebody didn't turn the attraction on while you're up there because you could get knocked off and it's a long ways down to the concrete floor down at the bottom uh, a level of the, where the ballroom floor is in front of that ballroom floor. Um, and uh, when I would check the figures that were uh, sitting on the chandelier, if when you ride through, don't get out of your cars, <laughs> your different buggies. If you lean forward and look up under the ledge, you'll just lean forward. You don't have to get out. You don't have to fall out. Just lean forward and look up. And when you go past, you'll see their, their feet moving back and forth. Um, but their reflection looks like they're on the chandelier itself. Well, up above, um, as I did a number of times, to work on those or check those figures, I would I would sit on the floor, which was all black too. Everything was black up there, and I would scoot forward to the ledge and then put my feet over the side. And I'm actually sitting on the ledge with the ghost, and and checking them out. And I did this one time, and the attraction was not. Somebody turned it on because it had to be running for uh, I think at least an hour before the, the the park opens to make sure everything's working right, and scared the crap out of me because I wasn't ready for it. For the same reason, I was always terrified and and um alice davis who did create a lot of the costumes for pirates of the caribbean uh, the carousel of progress all all the figures in the, the small world i mean she's such a legend in her own right <clears throat> <clears throat> but she and i talked not long ago about working in the carousel of progress and uh i know you've all been on the attraction but when you're out there, when you're in, when you're out there, when you're in there, um, and you see the show, of course, the two side areas on each setting are uh, behind what's called a scrim, and there's painting on the scrim. So when it's lit from the front, it looks like part of the main set. And then when it, the lighting on the front goes down, they light from 
in, inside behind the scrim and you can see through it and see the figures. Well, those figures, there was two scenes on each side and it was a small turntable. And uh, I was on it a couple of times when I went around, <laughs> but our biggest fear was to get into that set. There was no way to get into the, into the part of the set that was on the audience side. So you had to squeeze, and I'm talking the space was about a foot at the most between the main set wall of the main set you saw and the turntable wall. And you, you, you definitely couldn't be overweight. I mean, you had to turn sideways and squeeze through and get in there. And she and I both said, yeah, our biggest fear was that you tell everybody, don't turn the attraction on, we're going to be working on stuff. But invariably, somebody is going to sometimes forget, and they'll turn that on, and that turntable can all of a sudden rotate just as you're squeezing through, and it would not be a pretty sight. So, <laughs> so on that, <laughs> see if anybody, anybody else have a, a comment, or do you care? <laughs> Hi, Robin. Um, glad to have you with us. I'm drinking from... Uh, one of my many favorite coffee mugs with uh, Mickey and Walt on uh, Main Street. And, uh, ah, cold coffee. <laughs> but, and let's see what else. <clears throat> oh, <clears throat> and, 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 and also, if you've read our books, you know this uh, story is that um, Harry Holt. <clears throat> who was an animator for Disney, and he was tall. Harry was about six foot four or six foot six, uh, and the nicest guy, he and his wife were just wonderful. And um, <clears throat> anyway, he worked on, um, specifically, I know he worked on, on the spaghetti scene in Lady and the Tramp, and also in the dogfight scene. Uh, he worked on other movies too. And uh, then he left Disney to create the Americans for uh, humble umber. What are those figures? German things. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. They were limited. They were limited. We've got three of them that uh, uh, Harry signed for us, and uh, so they're very rare. And anyway. Uh, after doing that, he worked He worked some other places. He came back to Disney. And of course, now he was getting up in years. And uh, at the studios in California, he created the pop-up figures, which uh, uh, until around 70, 1978, around in there, uh, those figures weren't in the, uh, in the mansion. So they were installed at uh, a, few, a couple of them in the attic, uh, so a few more in the cemetery. And I think it was five or six of them we did, but I can't remember the exact number. But he had designed and they had made the figures. You know, uh, he sculpted them and then they made uh, molds and made the figures. So all it was was the head and the upper part of a body and a part of an arm and two. And then they had material hanging on the figures. Well, the, of course, the, the top part had to be painted and uh, they had to be painted in blacklight. And they did not paint him in California. Uh, they actually sent uh, Harry because he was going to be doing something at, after he did this, he was going to do something else at the Magic Kingdom. And uh, they were getting a, the, that particular thing ready for him. And they, so they had him come back to our studio. And for a week, he and I, for five days, sat in the dark in the black light room in our studio behind small world painting these figures and we became good friends for uh, doing that they lived not far from us uh, which was great so we go to dinner a lot with each other but anyway he <laughs> he hated black light painting he just kept he says oh i hate this this is not what i like to do well anyway we got it done they were installed and one time i was in the mansion early in the morning and and uh, was standing near one of these figures but i wasn't ready for it it popped up and i jumped about three feet but harry then went on once they once that happened and he then was put in the hospitality house on main street had a big animator's desk, and he was the gentleman who did all the Disney drawings for guests, 
for years. Harry Holt, great guy. Uh, okay, two new comments, and then it's it's time to say goodbye. What do you got here? Um, love your haunted mansion stories. Oh, thank you, Romina. Um, and I I love when you all make comments or you throw in things or, or say things about the attractions. Uh, any questions you have, I'd be I'd be happy to answer if I can. Um, or maybe I won't just because I don't want to. Um, <laughs> I think the father on cop looks like a younger version of you. Unsealed. Really? I know I'm so good looking. <laughs> I get I get that I look like Tom Selleck and if I put a baseball cap on him. I'm not here. Oh, oh, it's our son calling. Hi, Sean. I hope I... Uh-oh, I better call him back. I think it's time to say goodbye until next week. Uh, I will be working... Well, wait a minute. No. Next week is Thanksgiving, and we are having the family here. Um, everybody's coming here, uh, including uh, Sandy's... Uh, uh, Sean's wife, <laughs> Sandy's mom. Peggy March, and we're all going to be having this great Thanksgiving with the whole family here. We're going to have a great time. All of you have a great Thanksgiving. I will see you week after next. I'm certainly not going to broadcast on Thanksgiving. No, uh -uh, not going to happen. On that note, have a magical Disney weekend and a Disney week. And if you're on at the Disney parks at all for Thanksgiving, have a great time, and I'll see you all soon. Goodbye, everybody. Um, enjoy yourself.